Um, thank y'all for having me back. This is super exciting. I was really excited when uh, when y'all reached out. Um, so thank you to Photo Shelter for for having me back here. Uh, my name is Kyle Zedeker. I am a team photographer with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, I want to talk to y'all about maximizing uh, the file flow app today. Um, so first, you know, a little itinerary. We'll go over the boring stuff and tell y'all a little bit about me. Um, a brief kind of quick run through of our workflow um, and how we're transferring, whether it's game day events, um, things like that. And then tools, how to use them, and um, you know how to how to adapt to certain scenarios while using those tools and maximizing them um, to, to you know to help you out as, as much as you can, as well as helping your organization and your team out. Um, so, and then I want to talk about innovating the organization um, compared to innovating the industry, kind of big picture, small picture um, kind of thing. No photo pun intended there, but that worked out. Um, and then applications of how we've been using FileFlow, a few kind of creative ways that we've used it um, in, a, in a different way other than just, you know, browsing your catalog on your phone. So let's dive right in to the boring stuff. There's me, Colorado native. Um, I earned my BFA at LSU, Go Tigers. Um, that's also where I got my sports photo journey started. Um, from there, I went to Minnesota, worked with Andy Canudis at the Vikings. Um, also, shout out Chris Parent, the whole LSU staff, for sure. He gave me my shot. Um, but anyways... Worked with Andy uh, Canudis and Zach Tarrant in Minnesota for a season. Uh, then worked with Donald Page briefly at the University of Tennessee, who is now with the Titans. And from there, um, pinballed down to Tampa, and I've been here uh, since 2018. So the workflow. Let's talk a little bit about the workflow. Um, what you see here is just a little screen grab of the FileFlow app, how we have you know just kind of the base root section of our, um, our Buccaneers brand. Um, catalog set up like that. So what happens first is this beauty right here. This is our DMN pack, um, which we use to transfer photos. It's basically just a souped up uh, MiFi. So it'll ping uh, two different SIM cards, AT&T, Verizon is what we have. Um, it'll ping the strongest and use that connection to, to you know, hopefully push those files out as fast as it possibly can. From there, they end up in that live transfer folder. Um, and quick look at that, boom. You know, quick, quick kind of example here. Last year, we're making the playoffs. We're, we're going through the run. The city's supporting us. You know, we've got flags and sandcastles popping up and decals all over the city. And so we're we're going around capturing that. And you know, I see one that says, you know, cool. This one might work well for Twitter. Maybe you know, send it over to a uh, to Joey in social. Hey, this just needs a watermark for social. Um, you know, this will work well. Nice 16 by nine, nice Florida beach, uh, some palm trees in there out, at, out in Clearwater. Um, and so that was just a, a nice quick way to deliver a photo to our social team without having to, you know, pull out a card reader and a laptop and all those sorts of things. You know, you just, you're flipping it to there. Um, something like that. I use this little guy, nice portable MiFi. Um, the big one's just mostly for game day. Um, so, and then when you run into, sorry, there's, there's the, uh, the, the setup that I usually have, I've got the, the the big pack there, which there's three people or groups that love this pack. One is myself for you know, transmitting and, and our social team also loves it for getting images fast, but my chiropractor does too, because it keeps me coming, keeps you coming as you see. Um, so it's a nice, uh, nice, great, speedy way to get stuff out on game day. So another use, another application. Let's talk about using the app and how we're using it. Top left photo here, you see Devin White. This was like maybe a week before COVID hit. So you see Devin White, he's got an iPad, he's browsing it, uh, browsing the live transfer catalog on the web on an iPad. So since then, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe there's been, you know, it, it is an app that is good on the uh, the iPad now uh, due to some updates, it works great. And so at that time, why Devin was laying down is because the top right photo, you see John Contino um, help working with me there. He was our art director. He's based in New York and he was actually he had some flight issues. And so he was actually doing what Devin was doing, but he was on a plane. So he was kind of going through using that um, to kind of generate some feedback. Pretty much as soon as he got there, you know, I handed him the iPad so he could pull out some examples. And then he's going through giving some feedback. Here's what we need to see you do, Devin. Here's what we want to see you do, Kyle, you know, shooting wise, bottom left corner, making some adjustments there, bottom right corner, um, you know, making some, uh, sending some photos off so he can kind of take a look with our other uh, our marketing staff and other executives that are at the shoot. Um, so we used the the transfer system that way. Fast forward a little bit where not everybody's allowed to be in the same room, right? So we had 
all these COVID protocols happened, the world totally shut down, everything changed. We all know what happened. How it changed for us, John wasn't allowed to be there. We weren't allowed to have the creative director in, you know, in in the space with us at the time. So I had him install the app, gave him permissions, uh, you know, added him as a stakeholder, and boom, he's logged in. He's checking out this photo of Ndam Kinsu. Now to us, um, the Bucks fans, you know. I, I photograph these players along with uh, Tori, our other team photographer, and our other staff. We know his face, but what are the indicators that aren't giving away his, you know, identity per se? The numbers aren't there, right? So as we're trying to grow our fan base and grow who we reach with our brand, we are also looking to make them more recognizable. So he said, hey, we're looking to capture that same intensity, that same Indomitian Sioux intensity that we need. Try having be a little more animated, come at the camera just a touch, and we end up here. You end up with the 93. Those who don't know him say, wow, that's kind of an intimidating, scary dude. And boom, they'll look him up and you, and you find him that way. Same thing here. Let's go to JPP. John's looking at these photos. I send him a note and say, hey, check out the first batch of JPP in the white uniform. Show me what you think. He said, you know, things are great. I love this. Change a few things here. Try and get that same emotion, but capture it again, kind of coming at the camera giving me this live feedback. And he's all just checking this on his on his phone. And occasionally he would send me one, similar to the example of the screenshots you saw, he just shoot me a text, he'd be like, kind of like this thing. So boom, that's what we ended up with. I want to get some of that with with their helmet on, some game action, game action, <laughs> pose game action. And from there, that ended up here to where we are now. So that, you know, all that live collaboration, helping get that image exactly that we need, you have those identifiers in the shoulder numbers and he was able to be a little bit more flexible and kind of that skinnier frame with using that image of JPP here. Another example of how we're using this app, uh, departure photos, it's usually a really quick process. And, you know, guys are going through TSA, they're getting screened, they're getting right on the plane and, and they're sitting down and pretty much once the last guy is on the plane, uh, doors are shutting, wheels are moving up and, you know, we're losing Wi-Fi for a little bit. So there have been times where I have transferred to that live transfer folder. And then as soon as I sit down before I have any time to say, connect to you know a hotspot uh, on the plane or plug in a card reader or anything like that, I'll go through that same process and say, hey, here's, you know, pull these down to my phone, go through a few quick edits that way. Uh, and that's again, similar to that example I showed, send it off to Joey or, or Jill or our social staff and say, hey, this all the scenes is a watermark, toning is good. Um, but you know, the, the departure photos were, we're an example where you know you need to work quick and kind of think quickly that way. There, this is the photo that uh, I I didn't I didn't say anything, um, but this is the photo that you were talking about uh, beforehand. This was another great example of the app being used. Um, whether or not the photo was used from when me sending the app uh, through the app, I mean, uh, I'm not sure. We had social staff on on boats all over the place, but. Kind of the same deal. I I, um, I I stuck my camera up, snapped the photo, and and turned around, sent a bunch of frames off, and then just you know for redundancy went to went to my app, made a couple crops, sent them off. Um, and so you know whether our social staff was sitting by their laptop or um, on a separate boat, like many of them were, you know they they were able to pull that content and get it out to to the fans and to all of our channels nice and quick. Um, another thing here, we're work, you know, we'll work with, with other uh, organizations as well. Um, when we kind of had the Lombardi Trophy tour last year, um, we took them to some Lightning games, um, some some spots around Tampa, and we were able to also share these nice and quick uh, to the Lightning's people um, in case they needed to either re repost, uh, do do whatever they need to do with the images, but also incorporating their branding, to our branding, and and that that Team Tampa Bay um, aspect of things. So there's a couple more here. This is another example of not needing to carry a backpack with your laptop and a card reader and something like that. A mobile workstation is possible, but to have your mobile workstation just be right here, that's, uh, you know, that, that can be super, super helpful for, for a lot of reasons sometimes. Um, so that's a little bit of how we've been using the FileFlow app um, and uh, appreciate y'all tuning in. Very cool. Very cool. Always love seeing your work, Kyle. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I we've got a awesome team here. 
awesome team here. I'm so that I, myself and Tori and everybody. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, had to had to had to put it in there. That was definitely an example of like how I've been using, you know, how we didn't need that that actual workstation to get that photo out. Um, so it was it was a it was it was a team effort on all fronts, and and uh, you know the, the photo shelter portion was was part of the team. So it's honestly it just gives me stress. But I guess if you're a professional football player, you're you're good at catching. I mean, you got the you got the best one. You got the best arm, and then you got a, a boat full of tight ends and wide receivers. So we were, you know, we were we were set. <laughs> that must have been nuts. Um, all right, we have some questions for cool. you. Uh, yeah. If anybody has questions um, that's listening, go ahead and drop them in the live chat. We'll be asking. Um, this one is pretty direct. Uh, I guess a yes or no. Um, somebody okay. wants to know if you were on staff at UT during the battle at Bristol. I was not, um, but that is one of, um, if you can find it out there, the like collection of photos that uh, Donald Page, like I mentioned, he's with the Titans now, that he and his team were able to pull from uh, from that game was crazy. It was wild. So there's some really cool imagery out there uh, from that game, but I was not there. I believe that was the year before I got there, uh, but yeah, definitely go check out that one. Remembering... If I'm remembering this correctly, I actually think that deep in the Photo Shelter Stories blog, there's an article about that game. Like years okay. ago, like before, I think, I mean, I'll try to yeah. find it or something. But anyway. I, it was a crazy scene. Yeah, definitely. I would just go check out the photos of, you know, regardless of, of work that you see from there. It was, it was a crazy scene. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's some... <laughs> Funny, but I'm just cracking up at one of these questions. Are you allowed to make eye contact with Brady? <laughs> My, <laughs> he, I, he's great. He's he is great to work with. He's really great to work with. Uh, but, but it is funny getting those kind of questions. So yeah, yeah. So um, another question that's coming through here, and Jeremy, feel free to jump in on uh, any of that. See, we're getting a lot now. <laughs> Sure. I'm still cracking up about that last one. Um, what is the uh, target time from shoot to social for content for the Buccaneers? Like, so we, I haven't, you know, we don't have like a concrete, you know, we're not necessarily sitting there like, oh, that was, you know, we missed that one kind of deal. Um, but it really depends on the gravity of the moment, right? Like so many, so many of these things, like, you know, say the, the photos of Shaq uh, lifting the trophy at the lightning game, you know, those weren't necessarily like, we have to get these out like right this second, but say something closer to, a, you know, a, a touchdown um, or anything like that, where not only are we trying to post some stuff on, you know, our social team is trying to use that and use some copy with it. But then our designers are also pulling that image and working them into score graphics, quarter graphics, things like that. And so there's certain other elements of the content team um, where the, the speed plays into it. Um, but it, it depends on the gravity of the moment where that target time, I guess, where we're trying to get it from camera to whichever platform, um, you know, it, its destination is. So. Cool. Love, love to hear nice. about the speed. Um, you kind of spoke about some gear during your session, Kyle, but we'd love to know like mm -hmm. what's in your bag. If you can go behind the scenes a little bit, talk about what what you typically have in that bag that that gives your chiropractor some some <laughs> some yeah. joy. Then let us chiro <laughs> bag, no doubt, no doubt. So I mentioned our hotspot. Oh, there's the lights turned on. Also, okay, great. <laughs> um, yeah, so we got the hotspot going there, um, and like I mentioned, just a little plug. That's a DMN Connect, right? Yeah. Yeah, I saw Great. I saw giving giving one away. Yeah, we're giving that away today at the end of the day. <laughs> Great. All right, cool. So that's Fun. boom. There you go. This yeah, I, I can't enough good things about it, you know. Not even good. I didn't I didn't even know that was like a, a, a thing, so this wasn't planned. But yeah. um yeah, so we're using the DMN pack, that thing transmitted through all the connectivity and traffic through a Super Bowl um last year so it, it's definitely a workhorse but then you've got say for departure we've just got your little verizon wi-fi um kind of thing that we're we've got in there um and then in terms of the rest of that backpack you know there's a few few extra pockets in there that whether that's you know a prime that i'm swapping after pregame, um a flash that i you know pulled from using in the tunnel or something like that uh, but just kind of miscellaneous things that i'm using to kind of give some variety to the uh to the photos for that day Nice. Um, I have to ask you about the Super Bowl. 
Uh, how was that? How was yeah. your experience different um, before, during, after the Super Bowl? I mean, I'm sure that's uh, yeah, you know, that's not something every photographer gets to experience. No, it's uh, that was a whirlwind. The the two weeks from the NFC Championship game to following that, and I think Tori and and the rest of the photo team can attest. It was just like like it was boop. Here we go. It it just kind of happened and. You know, you, you have the moments where people from the organization that were around in 2002 and they say, you know, stop, take a look around. You don't know when you'll be back here kind of thing. And no matter how much you do that, I still feel like afterwards I was like, man, did I did I do that enough kind of thing? But it was definitely a, a whirlwind of an experience. And, and afterwards, you know, we had we had half the off season with uh, twice the stuff to do um, kind of deal. So. Um, Maybe not half, but you know, a shortened one. But uh, yeah, so it was, it was, it brought along a lot of a challenge, a lot of challenges. Um, there was a, a lot of, a lot of new things that we had to cover that we just hadn't shot before. And, uh, um, but you know, it was all, all part of that, part of that ride and part of that journey from, from the 2020 season. So, but uh, yeah, we're in the, the, uh, the Bruce Arians method right now. It's all, all 2021. <laughs> Nice. But what, what about like, in terms of that, you know, you talk about file flow usage or just yeah. um, coordinating with your social team. Was it any different or was it just really like a normal game? Not really. It was, I think we kind of had that hybrid. It was that weird kind of hybrid home game where it was at home, but it wasn't, you know, a Buccaneers home game kind of thing. So it technically wasn't our stadium anymore. So, it, you know, we really approached it kind of like it was, um, in terms of what we were pushing through content wise, um, we, we had, you know, a, a much longer list and, and a, a longer list to prepare for, you know, both outcomes afterwards, um, I think, but I think we, we approached it like a regular, not a regular game, but, you know, another game where we still just had a list, whether, you know, no matter how long that list was, we still had a list of things that we were going to try and capture and push out. And, you know, as we came across them, checked them, checked them off and, uh, Know, did did what we could to to overcome that afterwards. I know post game was definitely like an unexpected rush of mm. rush of photos that our our photo editor was like, oh my gosh, um, but but he was great all year, all all game, and so it's uh it's, again part of that team effort. You know, it's it's on us to to capture the images as well, but it's also we need you know we also need to deliver them so they can get them out to everybody else to see. So um, it's a it's a nice joint effort on both parts. And your gear made it all the way through the celebrations. <laughs> it did that was my that was my kind of my favorite thing as I was saying like I've told my parents and they were like what's your what's your bucket list thing you know before before I even started with the bucks what's your bucket list thing I was like I want to have a sticky camera from a celebration like I want to have me like cleaning it and then the next day I was like yeah I gotta clean it <laughs> like, yes finally <laughs> kind of finally hit the bucket list so it was a it was a cool thing but just along for the ride for more hopefully we will see that's yeah, definitely. Awesome. Good luck this season. Jeremy? Yeah, um, we have a question here, uh, and kind of like pivoting to more this year. How challenging was cool. shooting an entire COVID season um, with yourself being the only photographer on the field or, you know, limiting photographer access? Yeah, that was it was tough, especially given the the pre you know right we added we didn't just add a free you know we added tom brady we added gronk we added all these personalities and so there was a lot of you know storylines that we just weren't able to get you know say his you know a, a huddle in the locker room after his first win as a buck um you know pre-game before his first game as a bucket right There's things like that 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 you just kind of wish you had and then the infamous you know pre-game speech of the super bowl and who knows if we would have been able to capture that um but it, it, it was very difficult in the fact that, I mean, we, they expanded access for the NFC championship game, which I was very, very, very happy that, that Tori was able to join us or join me on the field for that game, as well as the Super Bowl because there was just, you know, even with two people, it's not even close to enough, enough, uh, enough coverage down there, at least field level. Um, right. Cause you can only do so much with the long lens from the, uh, what was the operational zone. Um, sure. And so we had, we had more, more photographers in the stands um, as well, but we certainly would have loved to have, have the full team join us uh, down on the field to get, uh, to get as many, you know, more of that celebration as we could. But um, 
yeah, this, this year it's expanded a touch. Um, and so we're, you know, so working with, working with the protocols that we're given and, uh, you know, trying to go out and, and make the most of it. That's kind of been the, the name of the game lately. So obstacles from, from everywhere, but you just kind of attack them. So mm. nice. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you about, just kind of to put you on the spot a little bit, was if sure. you've uh, thought about or taken a look at um, using AI in your workflow. I mean, I think that Dom Kong Su was that's a great example of you know how mm -hmm. something like that could be. Have Have you guys thought about that or looked at it at all? We I, I've explored it um, briefly. It just wasn't. We just weren't able to. Uh, you know, we weren't able to to make it work this this year. Um, but yeah, it's I mean, that's something that I've um, one thing I do or we do here is we try to get feedback from within about, you know, not necessarily how the photo library is working about, but what what isn't working? What aren't you finding? What are you finding slower than you want or, you know, what aren't you finding fast enough kind of things? And so, um, you know, for you, for you guys and in, in the, in the product stuff, the ability to see a Publix logo or something in the background and then that's added to the metadata is, is pretty cool. So that's definitely something I uh, definitely want to explore, but we'll, we'll see. Very cool. Ooh, Publix. Uh, speaking <laughs> of our fast food logo, maybe a pub sub. Pub sub, <laughs> chicken tender sub, got to do it. Yes, definitely. Um, one of the questions we had here, and maybe our last one, I know we're kind of running out of time here, but is yeah. uh, sort of the going the other direction where we've talked about social media and, and getting them the photos, but um, maybe from graphic designers or really anyone, do you kind of get requests from them? Oh, we'd love to get this kind of photo. We'd love to get that kind of photo, whether it's in game or mm -hmm. kind of the state, the more staged stuff. Yeah, um, they will get requests um, kind of. Not necessarily spur of the moment. They they happen sometimes. Um, that depends on you know if it's a if it's post game and it's a a close game or something like that. Um, say game winning field goal, then you know it's maybe hey we'll need a couple different shots of of uh, of Ryan suck up our kicker and and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it they do a good job of communicating with us. Um, we we get a nice run of show about what the content plan is. We've got one. You know, awfully big milestone for for Tom this weekend um, that we're anticipating in the league passing yards record. So things like that that we we get storylines ahead of time to kind of you know definitely look out for, and obviously the return and and things like that. Yeah. So we're this is definitely a uh, little bit longer run of show. <laughs> big storyline this weekend, I'm sure. Should be a, should be a good one. Yeah, it should be fun. Cool. Um, I'm gonna. I am gonna maybe go a little bit over because I'm curious about this. Um, okay. Obviously, like file flows is uh, a few years old, but just sure. not, not just file flow, but in general, kind of, I'm curious about how do you like train your end user, you know, to use or to look for photos or to access things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the way that you've sort of designed them to like, how do you sort of reinforce that? um the behavior i suppose that you that yeah, you want your end users to have that's a really tough thing and it's ongoing right because you know every, things are things are constantly changing and and so basically the way that we do it tori and myself will um we're you know always explaining the two ways to to navigate um, the catalog if you know exactly what you're looking for go ahead and search for it but if you kind of just looking around to then go ahead and browse the cat or browse the folders and the galleries. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it really explaining that uh, functionality of it. And then I think the big thing is, again, that targeted research and gathering that data from within your organization. Um, you know, not necessarily thinking you have to innovate the industry, but in the innovating from within and realizing what your team needs and what your organization needs. Um, and so taking that taking that kind of feedback as to where you might be, you might have something in your keyword database that nobody is searching for. So it's something like, well, maybe we don't need to kind of put that time in and, and keyword all these images if, if people aren't even, you know, maximizing that. So make sure, you know, making sure that you're aware of what your team is searching for, what your stakeholders are actually looking for and using, um, and, you know, kind of tailoring it to, uh, to what to what your team needs, not necessarily what might be the uh, you know 
industry practice or, or, or whatever it might be, but just really identifying what um, what fits best for your organization and, and what uh, what makes things yeah flow the fastest. So that's what it's about. Yeah. I love what you said at the beginning of your session, although I'm going to uh, misparaphrase it, something like uh, in a, being innovative in your organization rather than in your industry, something like that. I love that. That's such a. Yeah, it, it's it's something that I when I when I started and I'm like, I have, you know, I'm only 27, so I'm very young in my career and I have a lot, a lot, a lot to learn. And but one thing that I have learned is that not everything that you're, you're doing has to be like the next latest and greatest and trending on Twitter kind of thing. Um, and so really kind of sitting back and identifying where the bucks were when I started and then where, you know, whether it was myself or the organization wanted to see things go, then we were able to, you know, reach out and not necessarily create the latest and greatest thing, but then use the latest and greatest thing that we were able to then maximize and, and like I was saying, pivot and kind of stretch to our organizational needs as, as best we can. So. Yeah, I love that. Well, I hope, thank you so much. I hope we can continue to learn from you, Kyle, over the next uh, months and years. Frankly, we'd love to see uh, the visual storytelling that you and your team and uh, and you'll have to send a, a shout out to Tori for us. We missed her yeah. this time. Um, but thank you so much. We're hoping, you know, hopefully we'll find time again to connect maybe later in the season or after the season. Uh, after your second Super Bowl parade, uh, <laughs> sticky gear celebration. It's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> <laughs>